Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks, thanks for coming. Um, my name is Joanna. Uh, the brother introduced me. I'm from Uganda, and uh, we're going to go talk about uh, Python 2 and 3 compatibility. So uh, let's look at uh, a little bit about the history of Python. Uh, Python 2 uh, was released in 2002. In 2000, with great features and everything uh, that we, we were happy about. Later, it became community-backed, and uh, it became open source, and so we could, all of us in the whole world, we were able to make it better. It evolved to very many versions, up to around Python 2.7. Uh, so in December, around 2008, Python 3 was released. Um, just by show of hands, how many of you have written Python 2 code before? Oh, yeah. So I also wrote, uh, by that time, I was also writing Python 2 when Python 3 came. So at first, uh, there was a lot of uh, complaining because it was very backwards incompatible. Uh, however, Python 3 came with, with a lot of improvements. Uh, uh, it solved a lot of shortcomings in Python 2. Uh, and the core team convinced us that uh, most, some of the features or most of the improvements necessitated a major version. So some of the reactions, this is just one of them. There were actually many. So some people said Python 3 is killing Python. Maybe we fork uh, Python 2 and do our own Python somehow. But with time, uh, people became, we began embracing Python 3. And so what was formerly Python 3 wall of shame became Python 3 wall of superpowers with very many people. Uh, so as you can see at first, we're having a lot of reds because at first, um, m most of the li libraries on PyPy were, were, were we're only supporting Python 2, but later we see that most of them are actually green because they've gone hybrid. Most of the developers are now supporting both versions. So uh, what's the future of Python 2? Uh, Guido at uh, EuroPython in 2015 uh, said, told us that uh, beyond 2020, we'll not have Python 2. In other words, that is the end of life for Python 2. And uh, he promised that we, we will throw a party. I'm saving to go to PyCon in 2020. We are going to have a party to dance off Python 2. But well, uh, according to Guindo and everyone else, Python 2 has done a lot for us. We've appreciated, but we're going to celebrate it off in 2020. Around April, uh, you can look at the Python clock. Uh, it, it ticks every day. So, but what's the dilemma? We are, Python 2 in 2020, it will be no more. But the truth is, we are still having Python 2 users currently. We had a lot of infrastructure built on top of Python 2. And so Python 3 came, but that does not mean all our users moved. Whether you are, li where you, whether you are a person that builds libraries and your users are developers, the truth is you still have developers using Python 2. My, whether you are not a library developer or just a normal person that built another project, the truth is you still have users that haven't moved. Uh, somebody, uh, according to statistics, last year somebody gave us this data. Just last year, it's about less than 12 months ago, we still had Python 2.7 still uh, spring uh, in in use, in other words, in very many occasions. Um, and so uh, someone also said he found Py Python 2 in Zimbabwe. It sounded like a surprise to him. So the truth is, we still have Python 2 still in use. However, that does not mean Python 3 is, is also catching up with time. This is some of recent statistics that someone gave. So Python 3 is also catching up in a way. So uh, assuming that just because we've moved on, 
Assuming that all our users have also moved on is a very big lie. We still have very many of our users still using Python 2. So if you have uh, in, uh, existing Python, uh, an existing Python 2 code base, it would be very inconvenient to your users if you ported totally to Python 3. Uh, to reach a wider reach, the, mo the most important thing you do is probably support both versions so that you're reaching a majority of your users. Because the reality is most of your users are probably still using this. So if you're writing, if you have legacy systems or you're writing a new library, you probably should be supporting both Python 2 and 3, or you should probably be, be doing hybrid so that you're, you're, you attract everyone. So in view of this, uh, ver uh, a couple of things are, are in place for us to the rescue. Uh, so how can we what can we do to support both vi Python versions? So uh, uh, two people in the community have written two libraries. Uh, one is Python Future. We probably know it as Future, and uh, written by Ed Schofield. And six are uh, written by, by one of the core Python core developers, Benjamin Peterson. So these libraries have basically wrappers around uh, methods that aid us to write methods or implement functionality that will run reliably on both Python 2 and 3. Uh, let's, let's see a, a, a little bit of examples. Uh, so the first, uh, probably lo the loudest uh, difference we saw was in the print. Uh, even those that didn't write Python 2 at least know print had a, I had a problem with between Python 2 and 3. So in Python 2, we print was basically kind of like a statement. Uh, however, in Python 3, we introduced parentheses, so it became like a method. Now, uh, there is a built-in future module that we can use to go around that. So, uh, so all you need to do is import it first thing in your package or your module or your Python file and use normal Python 3 syntax. So if you have that import, the future import, with you, you import the module print function and write Python 3 syntax, that snippet will also run reliably on Python 2 as well. So uh, 6 also has a wrapper, a method uh, wrapper around. So you could import 6 and call them print underscore method with whatever you want to print in parentheses. So if you have existing legacy Python 2 code, probably that's what you need to do for all your print statements. Um, so the unique thing about the future import, the future import is a built-in, not the future package, is that it should be first thing in your file. So it should not be imported after any other thing in your Python module. So another thing that changed quite a bit is numbers. Uh, we know that uh, in Python 2, we had two types. We had int and long. And so, but Python 3, we, prob we only have integers. So we don't have long integers uh, by, defi by default long. So if you were, uh, for example, doing integer inspection using that is instance method, and you're probably comparing to long, the type long in Python 2. In Python 3, you get a, uh, an error in some way. So the way around this is that the future package, uh, like I said, it's just installable using pip. You can import its built-in um, module and use its int type. So you can check against that. And that snippet will run reliably on both Python 2 and 3. Uh, again, future also has uh, a constant called integer types. So when you check against the six integer types, underneath it does the hard work for you. It will execute the right thing on each, on either version. So in doing that will help you maintain compatibility for both versions. Uh, there's also a difference in uh, division. Um, uh, especially division where you had true division, where you had uh, 
where we are, our result is a float or something. So in Python 2, to achieve true division, you either made one, one of the numbers, kind of like a float uh, or something, that's when you would get a, a value that was true for division. But in Python 2, we see that that division is uh, default or uh, true division. So what happens when you, you want to support both versions? If you use the same syntax, you'll get semantically, that's not the same. So you run on Python 2, you'll probably have something else, and on Python 3, you'll probably have something else. So still, we basically still use the future import, import division. Again, the future import comes first thing in the file, and you use normal Python 3 syntax. And, um, you'll have harmony in your code bases. Uh, one other thing that also changed was uh, exceptions. So if you had an exception, uh, an exception will take the, uh, the probably a, a few parameters, the trace back and everything. So the syntax for, in Python 2, <coughs> we, we can see we had different syntax. Uh, so, <coughs> and then it, to achieve the same with Python 3, it's uh, again different syntax. So how do we harmonize the two? Um, both Python future and 6 have wrappers around, so <coughs> one way you would, we would achieve the same is import uh, raise, that raise method, raise with an underscore method, and give it all the parameters and exception text, and that future underneath handles all the mumbo jumbo you need for compatibility between Python 2 and 3. So all you need to do is change your code, use the method that future gives you with the necessary parameters and it will work. Uh, same thing uh, with 6, if you decided to use the 6 package, you basically just import the raise method, call it with the necessary arguments and uh, everything will work. So all you need to do is change the syntax to using the raise method from six and or future, one of them. Um, something happened with uh, catching exceptions. We in Python two, we basically had a comma just between the. And in Python three, we we there was a new keyword, as. So this is also a major problem. So, how do we handle this? Uh, if you use as, it will work on both Python two and three. So all you need to do is change the syntax to use the, se the Python 3 syntax and you'll be fine. Uh, another thing, uh, another great change that happened was around uh, package imports. So we know that the, st the standard library and built-ins were reorganized. Uh, some modules were renamed, others were reorganized, I mean uh, repackaged, maybe put under something else or others were some global global packages were reorganized under some other things, others were renamed. So what would you do? For example, uh, in Python 2, uh, you'd uh, import the HTTP library, would import HTTP.client to get the responses module. However, in Python 3, it's different. So how would you handle such a situation? Uh, one way to do that is you'd use optional imports use a try catch so in python th so for example if you're in python 2 you'll ex that you'll execute the try the try block on a normal day that is if you're in python 2 and then in python 3 of course the try would fail and then you'll end up importing the right you import the right module in the except yeah so that's one. Then re there was a, uh, also a, uh, a difference with relative imports. Uh, implicit relative imports by default are turned off in Python 2. So in Python 3, we have a way of doing uh, explicit relative imports with a dot. You could do, do two dots to say you're getting out of the directory. So what would you do in to, to achieve the same for both Python versions, if you import from the future module, if you import absolute import, you enable implicit uh, type relative imports even for Python 2. So you could use uh, your normal Python 3 syntax for relative imports after importing absolute import from the future package, that future and special future package. 
So another thing that kind of changed was how we set meta classes. Uh, the syntax in Python 2 was quite different. Uh, that's how it looks. That's how we set a meta class in Python 2. However, in Python 3, we had uh, a big change in how we do. And instead, this is what we do when we want to set a meta class. So to achieve harmony, both future and uh, six have uh, wrappers around with a method with, cl with meta class. So we can just call, use the method, put, give it the right arguments, and we'll be able to set our meta classes. So future gives us that method. Six also has the same method. Uh, with the same name and takes the arguments, which is the meta class and probably the subclass of the whatever we want. So six also has another way of uh, how we could handle compatibility when, when setting meta classes. It comes with a decorator uh, that we can use. Uh, the decorator is called add meta class. We give it the meta type, whatever meta type we want to give it, and it will set. Uh, the meta class on whatever class we want to set it on. Yeah, uh, so another maybe difference we have is uh, in strings and uh, bytes. We know that uh, in Python 2, whatever appeared in those quotes uh, was either a byte or a unicode, right? But in Python 3, if you wanted to specify that something is unicode, you need, it, you need, it, you need to prefix something before that's the whatever string you have. So how would we handle that uh, in Python uh, for compatibility? Do the same uh, prefix u or b before to indicate unicode and bytes respectively. Six comes uh, with uh, methods again. Uh, so you can call six dot u with a string, and then you'll say now that's a, a unicode. I'm creating a. This is the variable name corresponds <coughs> to a unicode with that string, or b to say it's byte. Yeah. yeah so uh, also there was a difference in base strings. So this was a hierarchy in Python too. So we had types unicode and str all like subclasses of something called base string. And base string was, of course, uh, in the hierarchy, it was after object. What happened in Python? So what you would do to check if something was of type base string, of course, we had instances where you needed to do that. So if you checked if something, if a string was a base string, it would still tell you true. If, you, if uh, maybe a byte was a base string, it would tell you true because in the hierarchy, they're just basically, they subclass uh, base string. But this changed in Python 3, where we have str and bytes directly under object. So base string is not there. So what if you had, you have code in your existing code base that checks against base string? What would you do in that case? So still future has a workaround for that. What you do is you'd, you'd use the base string type, which future gives you in pass.builtin, so you check against that. Because if you try to check against the type base string in, Py in Python 3, of course it will throw an error. But when we use future, we're able to access the right type, and it's future underneath does the magic for you. You don't need to know what it does. Uh, 6 also has you basically use the string types. You check again the string types, the constant string types. And uh, of course, it has the right type probably you need. It does underneath. It does everything to, to ensure everything runs smooth on both Python 2 and 3. Yeah, so in view of all that, we know that Python 3 was never a mistake. Like some people thought, like it was a blunder of the century. It has never been a mistake. And new projects should probably, not probably, new projects should be using it. However, Python is still in use. And even after 2020, it will still be in use. Some people will still use it. That's the reality. Of course, we, we know we, uh, and we won't be using it. But the reality is people will still continue using it. So if you're writing libraries, you should probably be hybrid. 
support both versions because whether you stop supporting it, there are people that will continue using it. Some people have, you know, in my country, when you don't agree on something, you begin saying coalition of the willing. I anticipate something like that. I'm not prophesying doom, but I anticipate something like that. Some people will continue using Python too. And so uh, I've, read, uh, I've been writing a book on the subject. Uh, uh, it's called, it's entitled Python 2 and 3 Compatibility. I demonstrate concepts on using, on achieving compatibility for both versions using 6 and future, future libraries. So it will be ready in January 2018. The writing is done, but before by January 2018, the book will be ready in paperbacks, probably ready uh, in soft copy before January. Yeah, so thank you. Um, we have managed to score another 10 minutes, so if anyone has any questions. How much will your book retail for in soft copy? Just a question, maybe you know. <laughs> Um, I, so a press is publishing the book, so I do not have control on the pricing of the book. However, as a person, I intend to make it free in the future. I cannot give you details of how much it will cost because I do not determine how much it costs. Yeah, for now. Yeah. Do we have any other questions? Uh, are there any like uh, performance drawbacks you know uh, for supporting both libraries, like I mean, both versions of Python. Um, not any that I know. Yeah, maybe that's something we'll need to look into. Yeah. Um, when you have like a massive ba uh, code base in Python two, are there actually? Uh, I know it's not really the toy, but. Are there conversion libraries that might help you to actually switch to three? Yes, uh, there are things like two to three. So you, they can help convert an existing Python 2 code to three. However, there are some things you need to look into yourself. Eh? It may not do everything as perfect. So you'll need to look into some things uh, yourself. <laughs> 